All right, so the final pay-per-view of the year is just around the corner. UFC 296 going down at the T-Mobile Bile Arena, live on pay-per-view in Las Vegas. And I'm very excited for this one. Top to bottom, these fights are ridiculous. And if you're a British fight fan, then you have got a lot to be excited about. Because, of course, in the main event, Leon Edwards defending the belt again against Colby Chaos Covington. Can't wait for the press conference. The fight's going to be great. The press conference is going to be absolutely goddamn ridiculous. Colby always brings it. He brings it to an absolute 10. He tries to get in his opponent's head. He talks a ton of shit. And it's hilarious. Listen, I'm an English guy. I love Leon Edwards. I'm Leon all the way. But I do appreciate what Colby brings to the table. The fight is one thing. The press conference is going to be another. And the press conference leading up to this one, this is going to be gold. It's going to be ridiculous because you got Leon versus Colby, right? We've got Tony Ferguson against Paddy. He's coming back. We've got Vincente Luque versus Ian Machado or Gary, right? There's a bit of stuff going on right there right now. And Ian Gary's just bloody lucky that he's fighting Vincente Luque because he's not the type of guy to talk about another man's family. And neither should anyone else out there. Quick thoughts on that one. But anyway, moving on. As I said, top to bottom, this fight card is ridiculous. So Leon Edwards defends against Colby Covington, okay? Colby's kind of backyard, right? Donald Trump's going to be in the building, more than likely, in Las Vegas. Donald Trump's the biggest fan. And Colby Covington is his favorite fighter. And here's what is going to make Colby very, very dangerous come fight night. He's 36 years old. This is his last title fight. It's as simple as that. This will be his third time fighting for the belt. Twice against Kamara Usman. Didn't get the job done, okay? Got stopped once, went to a decision the next time. Very competitive fights, though. Very competitive fights, but it doesn't matter. He didn't win. He didn't become the champion. The last time we saw him in action was 5th of March, 2022. So a while ago against Jorge Masvidal. Got the job done. Unanimous decision. And then there was another fight at Papi Steakhouse after that. We all heard about that one and it all went to court and all this madness. But still, that was done. That's out the window. So this is going to be the last chance for Colby Covington. Okay? This really is. So... You know, Colby's always out there doing interviews, always talking shit about people, always stirring the pot, and generally being very, very entertaining. Listen, I dare you to not be entertained by Colby Covington, because the man is. But where is he now? What is he saying lately? He's disappeared off the face of the earth. What does that mean? He is deep in camp, working his ass off because the pressure's on, right? We always want to win fights. We want to become champion of the world. Certainly, when it, this is by far the last chance you're going to get. And he's number one guy. Donald J. Trump is going to be in the building, okay? So the pressure's mounting, the pressure's on. And of course, he wants to become a champion over everything else. Leon Edwards, okay, he's just got to do his thing. Leon looks spectacular against Kamaru Usman last time out. Granted, it was a decision, right? And Kamaru had his moments, but for the most part, even though it, was, it wasn't a one-sided kick-ass performance from Leon Edwards, he clearly won the fight. He stopped most of the takedowns. The striking was on point. In the clinch, he was punishing Kamara with knees and elbows. So if he can maintain range, if he can keep at a distance, if he can use the jabs, the straight shots, punish Colby with knees and elbows on the inside and use those head kicks in stunning fashion and just basically keep the fight off the ground. That's it in a nutshell. If he can keep the fight off the ground, right, he's probably going to retain the belt. But it ain't going to be easy because Colby is like an energizer bunny. He just never stopped. Keeps coming and coming and coming. He's got cardio for days, okay? He's a nightmare matchup in that respect. I don't think he's as powerful as Kamara Usman in terms of sheer strength, but non-stop chaining attacks together, together. Lots of combinations on the feet, which is going to be dangerous against Leon. Uh, lots of combinations, and then he transitioned to a single leg, to a double, to a high crotch, back to a single, to a body lock. He just never stops. And the cardio that it takes to be able to wrestle like that you don't see it too often. That's Colby's biggest advantage here. He can weaponize his cardio. Lee has got to keep it on the feet. He's by far the better striker. We'll see how that one plays out. Alejandra Pantoja. My God. What a performance he had last time out against Brandon Moreno. Sensational. Okay, Pantoja, man, this guy is so excited. So excited. This is for the flyweight championship. And he'll be taking on Brandon Royville. Of course, Brandon Royville coming into this one, winning three straight, 15 wins, four knockouts, nine submissions. I'm excited for that one. Really is. Keep an eye on Pantoja. He's unbelievable. Now, before that, we have got potentially a lot of people calling this guy the next champion of the world. Shavkat Rachmanov, 17-0, undefeated 
all finishes. I mean, that is unbelievable. It's not often you hear that. Eight knockouts, nine submissions can get the job done everywhere. Very, very tall for the division. Great cardio trains at Killcliffe MMA with some of the best people in the world. And he's taking on Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, one of the nicest guys. One of the nicest guys, but getting to be one of the oldest guys. 40 years old, but he's not slowing down. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson isn't falling out of nightclubs. He's not living, you know, a celebrity lifestyle. No, he's at Upstate Karate, Greenville, South Carolina, or North Carolina. I'm not sure which Carolina, but it's one of the Carolinas, right? He's in there, he's teaching karate. The man's awesome. He's awesome from start to finish. I love the way he fights. I love what he brings to the table. Let's remember he fought two close fights with Tyra Woodley back in the day. Didn't get the job done, but came very, very close. Last time out against Kevin Holland, beautiful corner stoppage at the end of round four or mid-round four. Remember, Kevin Holland broke his hand, but, but Wonderboy Thompson, he was just in the zone. He was having a field day, and that was a classic Wonderboy performance. But this isn't easy. Shavkat Rachmanov really is something special. Before that, Tony Ferguson, t -Ferg going up against Paddy the Baddy Pimblett. Listen, we know what's going on here. Paddy Pimblett's coming back. Trying to, not trying to get back to winning ways, almost spoke weird there. Trying to win over the crowd, okay? Because, yeah, all right, his stock dropped a little bit. He had a close fight with Jared Gordon, okay? It could have went either way. He got the decision. That wasn't his fault, okay? It wasn't his fault. He doesn't score the fights, okay? And he might have been a bit cocky on the microphone afterwards, but so what? That's what we are as fighters. It's in our DNA, most of us, most of us. Certainly if you're British, certainly if you come from bloody Liverpool, you're going to be talking a bit of shit. It is what it is, okay? Um... And people booed him a little bit and people talking a bit of shit online. But as Paddy said himself, he said, MMA fans are very fickle. All I've got to do is come back, get one good win and they'll forget all about that. And he's absolutely right. I fully agree with him 100%. However, you might think this is a perfect matchup for Paddy Pimblett, Tony Ferguson, a big name, a former interim champion, a man that's been in there with all the best people in the world, but a man that is pushing 40, that's lost his last six in a row and five of those losses were by way of being finished. Some knockouts, some submissions, okay? So you look at that and you think, oh, this is a tailor-made matchup for Paddy. Give him a big name, okay, but one that is definitely guaranteed to win. Hold your horses. Remember, this is Tony Ferguson we're talking about. Yeah, he's had the losses. Yeah, he's getting older. But in all those fights, he was doing pretty good. Just engage it. The referee had to step in and save him. Round five, he didn't go down. He didn't get smoked. He didn't get finished. He got beat. That's a fact. He got out punched. But a lot of people get finished by just engaging. So there's no shame there. Charles Oliveira was the next one. Okay, lost the fight. Went three rounds didn't get submitted against the guy with the most performances, the most finishes, the most submissions. Charles Oliveira is the son of a bitch. We know that. We know how good he is. And he went the distance, okay? Didn't get finished. But, and then again after that, Benil Dariush. He's the main event this weekend. Going up against Armin Sarukian, okay? A guy that was this close to fighting for the belt. What happened? Didn't get finished. Did not get finished, okay? Went the distance. Lost to Benil Dariush. But we're talking top of the food chain here. Justin Gagey, Charles Oliveira, Benil Dariush. Next up, Michael Chandler. You've seen the fight. I don't need to go through it, but let's remember, he dropped Michael Chandler, and yes, he got finished with a spectacular front kick. But that front kick would have knocked anybody out, okay? So again, when you start to look at it like this, maybe starts to paint a little bit of a different picture. Then it's Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz, round four, gets caught in a guillotine. Pretty entertaining fight, back and forth. Both men looking pretty decent. Got caught in a guillotine. It's one of those things, right? And then against Bobby Green. Now, granted, against Bobby Green, you might think, well, there's a step down from Justin Gagey and Charles Oliveira to Bobby Green. Well, Bobby Green just knocked out Grant Dawson in 33 seconds with the first punch that he threw. That makes that loss age a little bit better. So as I'm saying, here's what I'm saying. Don't be writing off Tony Ferguson. He's training with David Goggins, right? And I know running on treadmills and doing long distance stuff isn't really what you need for mixed martial arts. But I'll tell you what a man needs. When he stepped into the octagon six times in a row and he's lost six times in a row, the confidence starts to go. You start to doubt yourself. You start to think, I haven't got it anymore. And once this goes, then it's over. And guess what? David Goggins is probably one of the best people on planet Earth to have around and make you believe in yourself. Stay hard, motherfucker. So that, that, I'm excited for that one. Cannot wait for that one. And of course, opening the main card, Vincente Luque versus Ian Machado Gary. Ian Machado Gary is just going to focus on the fight. 
all the noise, as he said on social media. We've seen what's going on. Sean Strickland's talking a bit of crap. A few YouTubers are talking a bit of crap. They're talking about the man's wife for crying out loud. I have a little bit of respect. I'm not going to get into all that stuff. I'm not going to, I'm going to rise above it. They're all just doing it for clicks and likes and all the rest of it. None of your goddamn business. Simple as that, really. Let's be honest. But against Vicente Luque, this is a pivotal fight for Ian Gary. Okay, it's a step up in competition. Vicente Luque is no joke. Last time we saw him against Rafael Dos Anjos. Yes, the two before that, he lost. Bilal Mohamed and Jeff Neal. Very tough fights, but overall, he has a record of 22-9, and 9, 11 knockouts, 8 submissions. Vicente Luque can get the job done everywhere. And Ian Machado Gary, very tall, very fast, very lean. 6'3", six, 6 wins in the UFC, 3 knockouts, 3 decisions. But this is a step up in competition. If he can go through... Uh, Vincente Luque, the way that he's beaten most of the other people, okay, he struggled a little bit, but if he can get one of those knockouts that he's been delivering lately, I'm telling you, all the recipes there, Ian Gary versus Leon Edwards, because they're talking shit, they're getting thrown out of gyms. The, 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 it's the melting pot. It is the perfect storm for Leon Edwards versus Ian Machado Gary, okay, at some point in the future, next year, maybe in the UK, throw Tom Aspinall on there as well. So, anyway, there's the main card, but going through it top to bottom, Josh Emmett, Giga Chikadze, that's going to be sick, Arini Aldana versus Carol Rosa. Cody Garbrandt is back in there. He's getting back in the octagon. Love Cody Garbrandt. Always brings it. Yeah, he's lost some fights recently. I think he won his last one, pardon me, though, if I'm not mistaken. Hold on. Yeah, he did. Yeah, my bad. Trevin Jones. Cody Garbrandt's so respectful every time I see him. He's always nice to my kids as well, so I like that. But let's remember that absolute domination he put on against Dominic Cruz back in the day. That was one of the most dominant performances, one of the most technical, the boxing, the wrestling, the takedown defense. It was unbelievable. And then he's dancing as well in between. I mean, it was unreal. Don't do that. Whatever it was that I just did, don't ever do that. Uh, and Brian Kelleher, come on, man. Who doesn't love Brian Kelleher? Alonzo Menafield taking on Dustin Jacoby, right? Uh, Martin Boudet. How about this one? First fight of the night. Rude boy Randy Brown taking on Muslim Salikov. Rude boy Randy Brown. Love that guy, Muslim Salikov. The king of kung fu. Is that his nickname? Yeah, the king of kung fu. First fight of the night. T-Mobile Arena. I can't wait. Not going to be there. Devastated for that one. I'm going to be live on stage in Manchester, December 16th, Tales from the Octagon 2, December 14th at the Indigo at the O2. Okay, myticket.co.uk. We'll be talking about all of these fights. We'll be going in depth. We'll be taking the piss. We'll be having some fun. We'll be having a laugh. I'll be joined by Tom Aspinall, Paul Craig. We'll be talking about all the things in British mixed martial arts. We'll be telling a lot of stories. We'll be answering your questions, doing a Q&A, doing a meet and greet, having a few drinks, generally just having a great time. So buy your ticket, myticket.co.uk, and I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, ring the bell. See you soon.